Looking for a way to get healthy? The Chef You and I program has the answer. Catherine Raker and chefs from around the nation will teach even the most inexperienced how to cook. Come into their kitchen and watch them take ordinary foods with loads of calories and fat and turn those foods into healthier dishes. You will be the first to get tips and ideas on foods that are easy to prepare. Now let's join Catherine and today's chef and learn how to make today's recipes. Hi, this is Catherine Raker of The Chef You and I, and our guest chef tonight is my favorite chef of all, Father Andrew Umberg. And, Father, what are we making tonight? Well, we're going to make some bruschetta. Bruschetta. And some people say bruschetta, but really it is bruschetta. I know because I lived in Italy and no one ever said bruschetta. They always said bruschetta. Okay, bruschetta. Got yeah, it. Nice. Got it. Got okay. it. So we're making a couple of different kinds of bruschetta, correct? We are, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. So uh, you bought some French bread, yes. and uh, the grocer, you had them slice it real nice. Right. And we have these nice little pieces of French bread. Smells really nice, wonderful. Right. Right. We've got the broiler on, and right. it's heating up anyway, and I think it's... I th how are we doing here? It's getting pretty hot, so I guess I should leave this open a little bit. Yeah, since it the is. Boiler and all. Yeah, it's all right. It's Don't hard worry. to keep that thing closed. Don't okay. worry. Okay. So what we'll do? You don't spray them with anything, do you? I don't, but we'll just brush them with a little olive oil, though. Okay. And so I've got this so that we can brush them with some olive oil. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I got, got the brush I got out. The brush out. Yes. Okay. Uh huh. And so this is a you know an appetizer or a first dish, and in, in, in Italy they call this a. Primo piatto. Uh, Primo uh, piatto. Uh, yeah, excellent. That's, it means first plate. You know, they're always trying to get you, you know, to a fancy restaurant. And at well, the time I was there, the dollar was very strong against the lira. This was before euros. Anyway, oh, mm -hmm. I could go there and order, you know, I'd always get me a Primo piatto since I, you know, since it was only five bucks right, or whatever. Right, so right. anyway, uh, what? But you get the first plate, and that's your appetizer. Then you could, another primo piatto would be your pasta or whatever. Right. And then you could get a meat then, you know, and that would be your secondo. Yeah. Is that the yeah. entree? Sec yeah, 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 the second. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and brush some olive oil um, mm -hmm. on this bread. Okay. And uh, Catherine is sensitive to garlic, so we're avoiding put. Now, another thing we could do is, uh, you know, if we, if we left the French bread whole or an Italian bread or something, you know, something about this size, if we were to uh, put garlic in a press and kind of just get a little bit on the outside of that crust, that would be another thing we could do, okay, yeah. to make it super garlicky. But again, we've made uh, two different kinds of uh, bruschetta topping here, and we're going to add another one, right? So um, we have in this, in this container, the larger one, I've chopped up some fresh tomato mm -hmm. and then uh, added uh, a little bit of salt and pepper. A pretty decent amount of salt, really. Yeah. And some black pepper. And yeah. then some olive oil, maybe a couple. And this thing, maybe a, a few tablespoons of olive oil. Right. And, I mean, no, no more than two tablespoons in that. In, in that. I, don't get me wrong, you can add more. It doesn't hurt anything. It's delicious. It's actually I good know. for you, too. It's good for your digestive system. Very nice. And it has other benefits, too. And we're a healthy cooking show, remember? That's right. That's right. So. Um, and so, because yeah. Catherine... Uh, Cannot have the garlic. I said, well, let's at least put some onion in her. So, I'm sorry, but in mine, so there's tomato, uh, chopped tomato. Uh, there is garlic in, in, in mine. Uh, there's salt and pepper. So, in this, there's probably a good half teaspoon of salt, okay? And then uh, a little bit of cr gr ground uh, black pepper. And then we chopped up some basil as well. So, and then fresh thing, basil. Yeah, fresh, fresh, fresh basil. Fresh basil, yeah. Oh, it's great to have fresh basil. It's a big difference. This is one dish. I think any time you use fresh basil, it makes a difference. But this is really important to have fresh basil, in my opinion. Oh, definitely. So anyway, so anyway, so we have salt, pepper, a couple tablespoons of olive oil. We probably have a, a, a two teaspoons of chopped garlic, a chopped garlic from the jar that I put in there and stir that around. And then we probably put, I'd say, 20 little basil leaves, you know, about the size of this. 
right, right here. Right. Uh, about 20 of them. We, you know, Catherine bought some nice fresh basil. So I took them, put, pulled them off the leaf, chopped them up, and stirred that in. And we did it ahead of time. We did it a half hour ahead of time. Why, and, Father? Uh, uh, because we want that, uh, that garlic to get everywhere in there. And mm -hmm. we want that basil oil also to get into the olive oil. Um, so it should be really nice that way. You know, I'm growing mint. I'm growing a lot of things indoors right now. Nice. And actually, I love growing uh, herbs because it makes it nice. And I freeze them, Father. Let's see how we do here then by throwing these in. To the a nice amount broiler. Of, yeah, in yeah. the broiler. Okay. So you want to have your, your bread kind of toasted first. Then you can just put your uh, topping on. Or, uh, you know, you can do these on the grill. It's very nice on the grill. But you want to get your bread nicely toasted. And then some people, I think normally most of these things, you just put the tapenade on cold. I mean, whether it's an olive tapenade, the, you know, the fancy word, I, they use it for tapenade. I don't really know what they call the tomato mixture, but we'll call it a tapenade okay. today. Kind of, we're using it the same way. Okay. So we'll and go how long and do we put one. them in there for, Father? Uh, we're just going to put them in until we smell toast. Um, so yeah, exactly. Good. So, so okay. yeah. So it could be a couple of, you know, I don't think more than a couple of minutes. Um, so you want me to turn the timer on? That might be smart. Yeah, let's okay. just put it on for so, two minutes for okay. now. Okay. All right. To timer. start it off. So you just do two minutes. Okay. Looking for that 159. There, there, there we, we go. go. Okay. So what's next, Father? Well, um, Let's see, so you've bought a beautiful uh, array of these olives. You've got some nice Kalamata olives and other, these are all pitted olives. Uh, some are more green, some are kind of like in between green and brown. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're all olive color, I guess. But okay, so we have nice uh, light green ones and then deep green and then brown. Uh, there are different kinds of olives. And then there's also, you have some nice chopped, just regular, what we would call Spanish olives, right? And since these are already chopped up and you have some of them, it's good to use what you've already got. Mm -hmm. And so if you can give me a spoon, that spoon right over there. Here you go. I'm going to spoon these off onto this uh, cutting board. Because mm -hmm. you want, I think, a little bit more of a nice, more exotic olive, you know, mixed with this to make a nice top and odd. Mm -hmm. Okay, and look, there's another color here. I want to make sure we got all our colors here. Yeah. Okay, and so I'll put that there. Mm-hmm. And then nothing real fancy, right? Just um, just chop them up. We want to get them chopped up, yeah. Well, no. we'll make sure there's no pits in there. Every once in a while, I get olives that are supposed to be pitted, and I'll put that thing in my mouth, and all of a sudden crunch. I mean, oh, it just no. takes my tooth off. Oh, great. Yeah, we don't want that. No, we don't want that. So we're making, what else? We're making veal cutlets. Uh, yes, yes. What, what the, in Italy, they call cotoletta alla milanese, meaning veal cutlet. That's been hammered and breaded and uh, sautéed, or uh, I guess you'd say fried. Okay, say it again in Italian so I can learn okay. it. Okay, uh, cotoletta. Cotoletta. Which just means cutlet, as you might Okay, have cotoletta, yeah. Alla. Alla. Milanese. Milanese. And that means Milanese, like from Milan. Yeah, so cutle cutoletta alla Milanese. Cotoletta alla Milanese. It's more cotoletta than cotoletta. Is that the thing beeping for us there, saying our? That looks good. I think it does too. So we're gonna we're gonna mix this with there. Father, they look great, perfect for what we're gonna do. You want to show that to the camera? That's Golden awesome. Golden brown, gold Absolutely brown. Absolutely yes. easy, Father. And they're still soft on the other side, which is fine, I guess. You know, there might be some people that would flip them over and do some more, but mm, uh, yeah, fine. why, why? We're fine. Yeah. Okay, so what you're gonna do next? Okay, so then um, what we'll do is uh, we're going to take, okay, here's that mixture I mentioned again, you know, a few tomatoes and then what, you know, you, you put leaves in until it looks like that. Again, remember, there is about two teaspoons of chopped garlic in here, and there's also a, a tablespoon or two of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, a decent amount of salt, like a good quarter teaspoon, maybe a half teaspoon, and some grind, a little bit of grind of black pepper, you know, not too much, not not even an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper. So it's pretty simple from here then. We just take this, this nice oily, tomato-y, basil-y, salty stuff, mm -hmm. and we put them on here. It's kind of like eating a taco. There's real nice, no nice, civilized, neat way to eat them. You're always gonna get pieces of tomato falling down, okay? Yeah, right. 
but we'll put this on here like this. And I think our producer likes these, so I think he's <laughs> his mouth's watering. Yes, he does. Mine is too. Um, true confessions. We had a little rehearsal eating of them. They did. Um, so anyway, well, you get the idea. No rocket science here. We just put them on, and you want to serve them while this bread while this bread is still a little bit hot. And then let's see. Then we made Catherine's. You know, I did this with a sweet onion. Same same type of thing. Um, Oh, we don't want any of the garlicky mixture in no, there. No, we don't. You want me so to do, we'll do it? Yeah, well, here we go. Why don't you go ahead and make one for yourself, and then we'll turn it a different direction or something. Okay, that's fine. Well, you can see the onions on these, Father. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that'll be the giveaway one. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. really the giveaway. Yeah, well, another the onion one because there's I the love the fresh basil because basil is so delicious. It is a wonderful flavor. Right. And here. again, I, I, I cook a lot with... Uh, with you know dry basil, but uh, but with anything fresh like this, it's um, it's got to be yeah yeah it's got to be. be yeah. Per but fresh. you know okay. it's really easy to grow it inside too, Father. Oh yeah. So yeah. you can have it all year round. So and then this, I freeze it too. You know that. And meanwhile, while you're doing that, I'm going to take these chopped olives that I chopped up. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put them in here. And here's the thing: is I'm scared that the the the, the flavor isn't going to conduct quite well enough. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm suggesting I take a little bit more of that olive oil, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll we'll use what was uh, what we brushed on. We'll use just what's left of that, huh? That's good. We'll go like that. Do you want me to finish nice. these? And then, well, then yeah, we'll go ahead and use this. Then why don't we use your onion spoon or um, that for one. these? Okay, so good. Okay, so then yeah, here we go again. No rocket science here either. So you have your nice olivey thing, and. It's not really against the rules to mix a little bit of um, of green olive or olive like this with, oh, wow. That now, to me, good. I really love this type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but here, just for fun, we're going to mix, we're going to mix this a little bit because that is delicious, folks, I'm telling you. If you get that, that olive along with uh, that uh, basil, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like, you know, the everything bagel type of thing. Okay, so look at us here. So we'll put some more of this on here. Mm -hmm. We've got some pimentos and some, you know, and the Spanish olives, the so-called Spanish olives. Mm -hmm. which I guess they really are Spanish. I don't know. Have you been to Spain? I have been to Spain once. Uh, Where? Yeah. I've been all over. I went with a man by the name of um, Angel, that is Angel. Yes. And his last name, I think uh, was uh, Garcia, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure. No, it was Castaño. Angel mm -hmm. Castaño. And he took me around, he took me up to Lourdes, which they call Lourdes in, in, uh -huh. in, in uh, France. We, he, wanted, he had had a heart attack and he wanted to make some Marian pilgrimage, um, pilgrimages. And I, he knew I, as a priest, wanted to see some Marian shrines mm -hmm. in Spain. And mm -hmm. I wanted to see Fatima as well over in Portugal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we went all over the place. So I was to Saragossa, as they say, Taragotha. Paragosa. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 the Spanish accent there oh, is, has yeah. a Z. That is Castilian. Yeah, oh, there you go. You're right on it. I lived in and, Madrid. Uh, oh, well, there you go. For two years. And I was in Madrid a day or two uh -huh. to see the Prado Art Museum. Oh, yes. And then uh, where else was I? Most of the time I was in Toledo. 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 Toledo, as they Toledo. say. Toledo. Holy Toledo, which is a beautiful city. It oh, looks like it's gorgeous. It looks like the way it looked on an El Greco painting from oh. a distance. I think they probably made a loan. No one's allowed to change, you know, the skyline of this place. Yeah. So look at this. We have these beautiful bruschetta. Again, everybody, trust me, that K sound there or whatever, you know, C-H in Italian mm -hmm. after an S isn't, uh, isn't like a German thing with a sh, but instead it's ska. Okay. Okay. So, so here we go. We'll go ahead and throw these on. Oh, those are they're your onion ones, so we want to keep them segregated look at this let's go fancy and go every other yeah, one kind of type right, of deal here right. Ooh. of course we didn't have enough to do that but we'll recognize your onion mind. ones even then yeah Ooh, isn't that nice and it then we'll nice. go like this and like this these are onion ones too as we'll see and then one more look at that is and that so, gorgeous you want to take a beautiful picture of that father so okay. this is Bruschetta. 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 Father's way. Yes. Right. Yeah, Father Yeah. Father Umberg's way. Right. Okay. So that's the appetizer. 
Yes. They call those tapas, too, in Spain. In Spain, yes. I don't know if they would make that. I mean, I have, they have bread similar to that. And, uh, yeah, you get all kinds of really fancy things, a little bit smaller. Yes. With tapas. Yeah, all those yeah, olive-oriented. Oh, they're wonderful. So okay. we're going to take a short break, and we're going to be right back on The Chef You and I with Father Andrew Umberg and myself, Catherine Raker. We'll be right back. We are back on The Chef, you and I, and Father Andrew is our guest chef today. Wish you'd come more often. You should. Um, but you're pretty busy, aren't you? I am these days. Six yeah. parishes. That's a lot. Yeah, it is. Tell me about it. So Ooh. we're going to do broccoli that has really got an Italian flavor to it. Yes, uh, it's the way in, in Italy, they, they like to have their greens. Yeah. And the greens are sometimes kale and other kinds of greens like that that we might have. Uh -huh. but, um, but also, when I've ordered greens before, sometimes, uh, right. uh, at a, well, one time at a Philadelphia restaurant, I was at uh -huh. with some priest when I was visiting him there. Yes. Um, they brought out broccoli when we asked for greens. So right. I think this counts. I mean, they are green vegetables. And so what I'm doing is I'm cutting off that, these florets and I want to make them small, not tiny, but small enough that we can easily saute them. Okay. And see, I'm going to be cutting the heads off of that one, too, okay. then, in a moment. Okay. Okay. Because here's the thing is we want to get olive oil on these things eventually. Okay. And I don't know if this is the official way of doing it, but it, uh, it works very nicely for me, so I'm very happy with it. So I'll throw some of these in here. Mm-hmm. And I'll go ahead and take off the other florets. We went, we went ahead and rinse these off. Yes. You've done a lot of work today. Off. I've actually been not much of a sous chef for you today. Well, I guess I, I'm a micromanager. What can I say? Yeah, we know. Yeah, yeah terrible know. delegator sometimes. Not really. Sometimes I am. You're the I only priest I'm... I have on my show. Well, there you go. See? So I'm as good as any other one that you have on here. No, because not there's no that one else way. Seriously. Okay. Well, there you go. Okay. That was not really a great lesson in knife safety, what I just did, but I, I survived to tell the tale. Mm -hmm. See how I'm kind of quartering these? And if you'll go ahead and throw those in, I mean, they don't all have to be quartered, but the wider ones. Yeah, they're pretty big, Let's actually. See, this broccoli nowadays, it's so white, and I don't think it's really as naturally white. The nice thing is it doesn't go bad in your refrigerator after a couple of days, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Mm-hmm. Do you have a market or anything like a Saturday market with vegetables during the summertime where you are? Not too close to me. Okay. Um, yeah, so I haven't gone, to be honest. However, mm -hmm. I, I do make a little bit of a shameless appeal that if anyone's like got, got too, much zucchini, yeah. too much zucchini or too much tomato, those are the things that, you really that people, love. yeah, yeah. Well, and there's also the thing, most people, they get nothing, 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 and then they have so much, they, they're trying to get rid of it, right. you know? Right, right. So that's what I, I, I well, do. Well, when I finish, when we finish the deck staining it, I can still put some stuff outside on the deck, actually. Okay, so, so we're gonna... here's my, okay, we're throwing away this uh, little side thing here. Okay. We're, they all right? I think they are, and I'm going to throw a little bit of water. I'm and saying it... oh, a couple tablespoons, boom, like that. Look at that, okay. That then, looks good. Um, okay. Right. Good, and we'll open up the microwave here then. Uh-huh. And what I'm going to do uh -huh. is throw these in here, put a plate on top of them as a nice, or not so nice, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't I have, have one nice. of those things that you can put on top of it, though. Well, but what if the folks at home don't? I'll show my kind of Your make kind it up of... as you go along way right. of cooking, right? Right, right. Okay, so... However, wow, I don't know how to cook. Do you want me to show Michael? you how to do yes, this? Yes, why don't you put it on for okay. two minutes on two high. Two minutes, okay, so cook time. And there it goes. There it okay. goes. Okay, so what we're going to do is let that um, heat up. We're going to clean and, this uh, off. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. And what, that'll be steaming itself. I might have to add another half. It depends on how much broccoli you're doing, how, big, how powerful your microwave is. You want to make it so that it does turn bright green, you know, and that you know that, you know, the broccoli would be hot to the touch. And then, you, then you're right at the right level to, to go ahead then and saute it in the oil. Then you don't have to worry about trying to burn the heck out of the bottom of it to get it, you know, right. hot all the way through. Right. Okay? 
So, so how long do you cook it for, Father? Well, in the microwave, again, two to three minutes um, right. is my idea. With that, But it'll continue to cook with that, with that plate on top or the lid if you have a nice lid. Right. Um, but then in here, we'll be sauteing it a little bit in olive oil and garlic and then uh, some nice little uh, crushed red peppers, you know, like the, the ones that are a pizza parlor often, you know, on, on, on the table. We'll put a generous amount of that in and some salt, okay? Okay. No black pepper, just salt and red pepper, garlic and olive oil, okay? Right. So we're going to take a short break here. Okay, we're back now, and Father's taking out the actual broccoli that we steamed for two minutes. And then okay. he's going to show you how he's going to saute it. Okay. So look, this is steaming. Oh, look at that. See, it is steaming. Oh, can yeah. you see the steam? I can see, this, I can yeah. see the steam. And Ooh, that smells yeah, good. And it smells like broccoli, but it doesn't smell like overcooked broccoli. That's right. Because that's not what we want. Okay. So I think we need even a little bit more olive oil than what we have in the pan. We have what I consider two tablespoons that Catherine considers three tablespoons. Okay? Yes. But we need another tablespoon at least. And meanwhile, I'm going to turn this on, okay? Okay, go ahead. See if I can turn on the right one for once. You okay, did. look you at did. that. I passed oh the IQ test. Oh, my gosh. Test. I'm so happy. So okay. here is the olive oil. There isn't much left in here, Father. Okay, we've got enough, though. That's good. I'm so okay, so in it goes. It's another tablespoon and a half. So good. We've got a good four and a half tablespoons. So about a quarter cup of olive oil That's here. That's right. Okay, beautiful. And so then what are you going to do here? Well, then I'm going to grab uh, some garlic. I bought some chopped garlic in a bag today. Yeah, you did. As you know, and uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and dump this into here. Okay. You could put a lot more. There's nothing, you know, uh, normally if I, if I took the chopped garlic out of the jar, I would like to say throw in a half tablespoon at least. So a teaspoon and a half. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, as long as you have some, it's going to be good. Okay, and there we go. So I only have about a teaspoon in there, maybe. Not even a half teaspoon tonight. Yeah, you want more? I think I might have some more. Uh, um, well, it might make it taste a little bit better if we do. Wait a minute. Let me look. But um, see, the thing, there's no exact science. You end up throwing away a lot of the garlic anyway, but, but that in it intensifies the flavor of the garlic oil. So that is a good thing to do. Okay? I don't have any. So Okay, and that's fine. That's fine. Sorry so I'm letting this heat up a little bit. This oil, it's getting nice and hot. We got it kind of medium high here. Mm -hmm. It looks like 7 out of 10 I got it on. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I want to make sure we get, you're basically flavoring the, this by getting that garlicky oil all over it. Don't you're touch it, You're cooking it a little hot. bit. Oh, that's not too bad. Okay. Okay. So I tested. Okay. And now I see that the garlic is sweating some, and that reminds me, I like to have that, that garlic sweating even more by putting a little salt on it, and I want to have that salty, garlicky flavor and that oil everywhere. So I probably put in about a... A good half teaspoon of salt there. Um, oh, that's beautiful. And then, so I'm going like this, and then in I go, and I'll just dump that on in there real nice, okay? Okay. And then we got to make sure we get it mixed up, okay? So, so it's not we're so going to get a closer shot of this, Father. Okay, so. it's not so much that I'm cooking it now. It's that I'm coating. I'm making sure that, you know, all the broccoli in one part of it doesn't soak it all up. You know, so because... If you, you know, it's like a salad, if it's not properly tossed. The thing is, when this broccoli cooks, I think it will absorb a decent amount of that oil. So I want to make sure I get it all tossed around there. Does it get, does it, it doesn't get crisp or anything, Father? No, it should not get crisp. Uh, I don't think it can get crisp. I've had kale, I, I, I cook kale a similar way to this, and that's delicious too. I steam it a little bit and then, or actually the kale, I'll boil it and... Um, I'll boil it a little bit and then drain it, but um, and I'll do that same thing. So, again, yeah, it's a full-on sizzling, you know, frying thing we got going on here. Okay, and I want to make sure I've salted the oil some. And I'm going to go ahead and flip it around and make sure, again, I'm coating it all very nicely here. How long here. did it take you to learn how to do that? That, that flipping around? Yes, I don't the know. flipping around. I guess, I, I don't know. I was always a fidgety kid. I learned how to juggle. 
I guess that, that made it so that it didn't take as long to learn how to do that. There's a couple of tricks to do it. I think, you, do, you know, you can put some dry oatmeal in. And test and, you and, know. And then just practice so, you know, you don't lose any money or don't get a greasy mess of a kitchen by screwing it up, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, something a little heavier. How long is it going to take to do that, Father? Hmm? How long is it going to take to oh, do that? Not long. I mean, uh, we, we can have this done. Really, once there's oil on everything, it's really kind of done. Garlic and oil on everything. So do you want me to get a plate or something to put it on? I to think serve it is it? time for that, like that, that tr three leaved uh, plate. But okay, so I'm going to do one more little thing though. Before, before I do anything else with it, I want to do one last general salting. Oh, and the hot pepper too. So I, I, I want to do one last general salting. And yes, I have not forgotten the delicious hot pepper. I could never forget those. We know. Yes, I love them too much, you know. You and were so always I'm a just, hot uh, pepper guy or a hot pepper kid. Yes, yes. Okay, so look at this. So I'm, I'm putting in, what, about uh, a, not, not quite a teaspoon. Teaspoon. Looks like about oh, a teaspoon. teaspoon. Eh, Teaspoonish. And again, no precise science to the whole thing there. In fact, when in doubt, put in more hot pepper. That's my rule. <laughs> Oh, look at that now, though. You can see yeah. that, you know, everything looks nicely peppered with it. Right. But not heavily you enough. You can put a little bit in. more in, right? Exactly. You read my mind. <laughs> Another quarter teaspoon, huh? And here, here right. we go. Right. Okay, yes, because, that, you know, there's not only heat added by adding this pepper. It's a bittering agent. So you have that salty flavor, the garlicky flavor, and then that bitter flavor of the, pe uh, the, um, the red paper, pepper flakes. I think it's wonderful. See that all in there it then? It smells and, delicious, Father. And I think um, it's a nice way if people don't like broccoli. See, I hated broccoli as a kid. Really? Oh, absolutely despised it. But the first time I went to a Chinese restaurant and got broccoli, I thought it was the greatest thing in the world <laughs> because it was tender and it, it tasted more like the nice sauce on it. I couldn't taste the broccoli. That's the best broccoli if I can't taste the broccoli. Okay, but now I mean I can I'm aware of the you know the the taste that that it is a broccoli flavor under there. So okay, here we go, Catherine. I'll go ahead and just I'm sorry. I, well, here let's see how my backhand is with my. Yeah, let's see your backhand. And and, and this is right-handed when, when I'm a left-handed person. So this is taking. This is all, new. all my motor skills here. Yeah, it sure is. It looks delicious, Father. So you just bring out a nice steaming thing of broccoli like that and. I think people that normally couldn't eat broccoli can probably eat it then or would be willing to, you know? Well, it looks absolutely, look at that steaming, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And you have that little bit of juice there to kind of help it keep yeah, it kind looks, of hot. It you know, I'm looks a hot food really freak, as you know. absolutely beautiful. Well, good, good, good. So we're going to take a short break and we're going to be right back. We'll have all the recipes up on the Chef You and I. And you can even print them out, put them on cards. We're going to do a cookbook in the next two years, and that's nice. going to be fun, right? Nice, Got nice. Got a publisher and everything, Father. Good, good, so good. So that's cool. Maybe you can help me with that. That would be I kind will. of cool. I will. If I'm going to put my crown jewel recipes, recipes in there. in there, yes. Yeah, I better. That would I be good. Sure. That would be good. We'll take a short break, and we'll be right back on The Chef You and I with Father Andrew Umberg and myself, Catherine Raker. We'll be right back. We're back on The Chef, you and I. I'm with Father Andrew Umberg, our special guest chef. And this is the best part of this whole thing is actually pounding it. Okay. So what are we pounding, Father? I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay away and we're pounding uh, some wonderful, what, veal cutlets that you bought. Mm -hmm. And we want to get them as flat as possible because we're trying to just saute them in a pan uh, you know, on the one side, flip it over, and then have the meat done. So we, okay. we need it to be thin. So here we go. There she goes. They're all in bags. You have to tell me when they're thin enough. Go more to the middle then. Work your way out a little bit. There, there we go. Okay, I'd say that one's pretty nice. Oh, yeah, watch your fingers there. I'm okay. watching. Okay. <laughs> You want me to turn it over and do it like sure, that? Sure, why not? 
So your idea is you want to kind of be working from the middle and kind of get them spread out. You know, we're trying nice sheets. You want sheets of veal when it's done. And I think you can do this with pork too if you don't want to do veal. Of course, the veal is going to be more so tender much, and uh, yeah, right. much nicer. Yeah. Okay, I think we're good to go. Okay, so now behind us here, right? I have in in, in a skillet, uh, I have two tablespoons of butter and about two tablespoons of olive oil. And uh, let's see, we start with unsalted butter, but I salted it some. Because normally I would use salted butter, but we had unsalted available, so why not? Okay, so here we go, kid. Okay. So, so I'll reach in here okay. with a fork. All right. Now if you can turn that toward me or, okay, or we'll figure it out here. Really? Okay. So it goes into the egg wash first, right? Yes, and this is just three eggs with a little bit of salt. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and just touch this a little bit here. I think that otherwise, trying to be too delicate, you can end up really, you know, mm -hmm. not getting the product done that you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, the egg wash, and I'll go here, and you've got some nice, just regular breadcrumbs that you bought at the grocery store. Very nice, and I'm going to flip this over, and I we got a nice amount. I'm going to throw a little bit of extra on here to make sure that it's nice. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here. Here, let me help you. Okay, that's okay. And then okay. here I go. And then in it goes into the oil. Okay, um, and we'll go ahead and bread another one. Okay, here we go. This one is kind of coming apart, Father. That's okay. We'll just see what we can do. We'll go ahead and turn this up a little higher, though. Again, we want to get this thing going. I took a little piece off because okay, it was Okay, that's kind fine. Good, good, good. Okay. Off. Okay, and we'll go ahead and get this in here like this. And we'll flip this one over. And I'm going to do these. And I seasoned the meat a little bit ahead of time. I, I salted them anyway. I, mm -hmm. I don't think I put any pepper on these, but I did put mm -hmm. a little salt. Okay, and then and we go into the breadcrumbs, huh? And while you're doing that, I'm going to finish these. Wonderful. God, this is a little harder, Father. Okay. These are thicker, and they have that stuff on them, you know? The membrane? The membrane. So, we're almost done with these, and then you really have to pound it to get it really thin. Oh. Okay, now do it over here again. Well, you can get your, your stress level, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm gonna put it in the egg wash. Actually. Meanwhile, uh, these are cooking really nicely. Show these real quick, okay? So let's see where we are. If I flip this first one over, I think this is my first one. Here we go. Mm -mm. Well, no, it's not. I'm trying to not throw butter all over your kitchen. Okay? Yeah, and instead, right. I messed up my, uh, my thing. I should have just thrown butter in your kitchen. Sorry. I think I'm going to take this back over to here where I can really work on it properly. And put this in there. And over here. Ooh. This smells great because there's just not like the smell of butter. Yeah, there isn't. Nope, I'm sorry. I'm moving that closer to our cameraman then maybe is advisable. So I've just got them cooking here. I don't think they've been cooking for more than, say, two minutes. And I don't think they shouldn't need a lot more than this because, you know, we don't want to dry them all out. And mm -hmm. yeah, so now this is getting nice and brown, really nice. Yeah, this is better than it was before, so that's good. Return it. Okay, it is kind of high, I guess, so that's good. Okay. 
Okay, so I think we're ready for a plate. A plate? Okay. Okay. Wonderful. I'll flip them over one more time just to make sure we get maximum brownness on them. Ooh, that's really looking nice now. So again, we've got this nice golden brown look. And we're going to have a moment before we put in the other one, so I'm turning off the heat for a moment. Okay, so one last little run around here and... So one of these is, is a serving, you know, we have the one in two pieces, but you get the idea here. And here's the rest of them, Father. Oh, thank you. And in they'll go. I'm going to put a little bit more butter in and a little bit more oil, I think. We had some drama trying to turn it on. Oh, it's right back on there. Look at that, like a miracle. Okay, and then we'll put another tablespoon in here. Just to make sure we have plenty, plenty of butter, and then just to make it a little bit more healthy, um, I have olive oil in here as well. So I put another tablespoon of that. I'll put a tablespoon of olive oil in as well. Okay, and this should be nice. Then we'll mix this around. This might start off a little bit browner, but that's—I don't think that's a bad thing. And this time I'm just going to use God's best tool he gave the human race, and that is hands. It looks delicious, Father. Good, good. I, it does smell wonderful. I'm a little intoxicated by the smell of all this butter. My mom used to make these when I was a little kid. Mm. How about that? I don't think I had veal till I was 35 years old. Are you joking? Yeah, I really, you know, it's a fancy thing. Um, and so it's nice. Okay, let's see how those flames are going. Yeah, we've got plenty of flame here. We'll just let it get going here. And um, I'd like to open up this thing. Again, you want to try to get it all, you know, at once in one layer. That's an important, I think, aspect of this. Make sure we've got butter under all of it, which I believe we do. Don't want to do too much damage, though, taking off those breadcrumbs. That's bad. We want to... Have that nice breaded delicious look there at the end of it. It all. does look great. Doesn't hurt anything to put a little more breadcrumbs in, right? Right, why not? The recipe will be up on our website as well, Father. Excellent. So we're going again with this, we did equal amounts of, uh, of butter and olive oil. Just so we're not using a whole stick of butter on this thing, you know. Okay, that's really looking pretty in my opinion. A little dark, but I think it's nice. Oop, here we go again. I'm trying to get it right on that um, end of this butter properly. going to turn it down a little bit. In fact, I'm almost to the point where I can turn it off, I think. I just want to make sure we get it done enough. If it's pork, you might want to do it a little bit longer, but... Okay, I think it's time to turn it off and let it coast a little bit again. We have, again, two more beautiful little veal cutlets. I'm really not sure if there's any difference between cotoletta milanese and Wiener schnitzel. Wiener yeah. schnitzel means, you know, Vienna, um, what, uh, cutlet or a slice, sliver, or whatever, and um, what, and it's veal, and it's uh, what, um, I 
It's veal with breadcrumbs, and uh, I imagine it's cooked in butter like this is. Um, there we go. We're back on The Chef, you and I, and this is a piece de resistance. And, you know, I'd really like you to talk about why this particular meal and what you learned in Italy about food. Well, I learned in Italy that uh, they're not afraid of a salt shaker. No, I know and that. That might not be the healthiest thing for some of us. Uh-huh. But um, so uh, you have to be sparing. But the, the thing is... Uh, like the, this is a rather salty dish, this bruschetta. Mm -hmm. Right. It is so delicious, though. It's, it, there's just something so refreshing about a nice uh, gar garlicky, or I guess in your case, oniony mm -hmm. um, thing with that basil, that sweet basil. That's just mm -hmm. so wonderful. I just find it a, just a great summer appetizer. Right. Uh, you know, for a grill out or whatever. And uh, what this else? wasn't um, heavy duty, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the cotoletta alla milanese, that's the first time I've cooked it. I've eaten a lot of it in my time over there. But you know, first cooked it? The first time I cooked it, and I think it turned out beautifully. And, and, and like you say, yeah, it's delicate, but there's not too much to it. I mean, once you get done with the pounding and stuff, that's a very quick process to go ahead and put it in the egg wash. Right. And, uh, and then and do, again, your mixture of olive oil and butter, which is very nice. Uh -huh. And then I love vegetables done this way to me it's a very simple way and they're still them, chewy they're still crispy they're crispy. Yeah, they're crispy and um they're crispy and yet um you can tell that they're done you wouldn't say gee this is well broccoli no, but so. you know a lot of kids didn't like vegetables because moms used to cook them to death right it used to be considered you had to thoroughly boil that vegetable to death. and you still you know, you have to rinse them off really nicely. And right. I guess at that time, they didn't have the same kind of food facilities with fresh produce. You mm -hmm. know, that... Um, but I grew up with a garden. Didn't you go up the garden? Some of the time, although we never got broccoli from it. I might have killed the broccoli if we did, did have really? it. Because, no, yeah. I didn't. I didn't, but if we could have. I remember as a kid, I was hoping that all the broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts in the world would just die. First time I heard there was a such thing as a blight, you know, on the trees, a Dutch elm <laughs> disease, I thought... Oh, what if there were a broccoli disease? Wouldn't that be great? No, I never knew I was going to grow up, grow up to, to be able to eat to each other. Right. Cauliflower, I still wouldn't be too sad. You know, I like it no, deep fried. No, it's but, all right. Uh, or deep fried or pickled. But anyway, so again, if you can find a way that you like vegetables, that's a good thing. Because they're, they're uh, what, they're, even if they might have a little bit of fat in them, they have lots of vitamins for you. They have lots of fiber. And they're displacing room in your stomach that you might want to put uh, junky carbohydrates in instead, you know? Right. Like, like four extra bruschetta. Not that I would ever eat yeah, right, four true, bruschetta. Yeah, right, true, true. Well, you know, the thing that I love about this is, is that it was simple. And, you know, people watch our television show to learn, a lot of times, to learn how to cook. Mm -hmm. And this is simple. I mean, it can't get any simpler, I don't think. Nope. Uh Nice. And and what you did with it in the end was you took the eggs and you made it into an omelet, yes. which was really cool. And what did it taste like? It tasted like it, like this meaty meaty butter. I mean, it could, oh really? Yeah, the butter was browned, of course, from cooking that. Right. You might have seen that. And right. then uh, still had some of the breadcrumbs in it. And then oh, and then that mixed in a little bit with the eggs, and then. We got some feta out of your refrigerator and put yeah, that in. Yeah, put that in there. And oh, it was just really wonderful. Right. Well, I can't wait to have you back on the show. That's a definite. Well, thank you. You should come, to, you know, like two times a month or something if you can I'll swing it. I'll try to get that with my six parishes. It's a little yeah, tricky. Yeah, I know. It's a little tricky for you. But I'll try. Well, we'll try. Thank you. And um, so, anyhow, I want to say that I brought you something special tonight. I don't know if you can have a little tiny piece of it, but I did bring some ice cream for you as Ooh, well. That sounds so. Nice. I haven't had a treat this week, so I yeah, decided to treat myself to a little bit of that instead of making it. I want to thank you so very much for coming on the show as our guest chef, as mm -hmm. always. And you'll find the recipes up on the chef you and I dot com or go to Catherine Rakers world dot com. And that's K-A-T-H-R-Y-N, 
R-A-A-K-E-R-S world.com, where you'll see the Chef You and I logo and Let's Just Talk, and you'll be able to watch everything. So we're on a lot of different stations and radio stations all across the country today and around the world. So thank you very much for coming today. And thank you, for me. Your, thank you. And guess what? Bon appetit, everyone. Have a wonderful, wonderful, enjoyable meal. Thanks, Father. Thanks for joining us on the Chef You and I show today. We'll be back next week with another great and healthy recipe. Don't forget to visit our website, thechefyouandi.com, for all of our featured recipes, cooking tips, and clips of the show.